All right, let's get into the heart of this video. You may be familiar with the Betamax format because I made a video about it recently. This is a Betamax tape here. It's a home video format. Many of you, unless you've lived under a rock, are familiar with the VHS format. Now, although this is kind of an unusual looking VHS tape, it is VHS, okay? Very, probably the most popular home video format of all time. But beyond the home video market, is a huge slew of formats that were used in the professional field. Some of them are interesting, some of them are not, and for the most part there was not pre-recorded tapes on these formats. Although I'm going to show you one that was pre-recorded because it came from a studio, but it doesn't have a movie on it. Um, this particular format actually was introduced in 1969 and was the very first cassette cartridge format for videotape. So you can see here, this is one of the cassettes here. It has some really huge hubs on the bottom. And if you compare that size-wise to VHS or Beta, uh, it's really quite a huge cartridge. I mean, this is like the size of a book. So, and a hardcover book, you know, for that matter. But this particular format came along in the uh, early 70s, kind of hit the world by storm in the 70s. Its goal was to replace this, and this is a reel of 16 millimeter film. So at the time, in the early 70s, people who were reporting on site, so let's say you had a news reporter who went on location, he would use film to film that spot. And then, of course, the film had to be rushed back to the television station and developed and, and gotten ready, uh, edited, and ready for, uh, for use. So you can imagine what a pain it was and a slow process that was. Unless, of course, it was a live feed. All right. So the idea was to adopt a format like this. And this is also three-quarter inch umatic tape. This is known as an S-type. So between these two uh tapes, sizes, this is the same technology on the inside. You could compare it to VHS and VHSC, where there was a smaller cartridge, but the tape inside was the same technology. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, play back this tape inside of a JVC portable U-Matic machine that was used just as we've described as a, uh, a news reporting tool or an on-location filming tool. And uh, so we're going to show you that. We're going to open it up, see what's inside, and uh, it's going to be kind of cool. So hope you're interested, and if you are, stay tuned. So before we cut open this uh, videotape cartridge here and take a look at what's on the inside, I wanted to give you a couple little tidbits about the U-Matic format. So according to Wikipedia, the U-Matic name came after the shape of the tape path when it was threaded around the helical scan video head drum, which resembled the letter U. Surprisingly, Betamax used a simpler type of B load as well, and the recording time was limited to one hour. So this big tape here could hold an hour worth of recording, and this little S-type tape could only hold 20 minutes of uh, recording. So you were very limited. You had to have a, a quick interview, get it in in 20 minutes or use multiple tapes. So Umatic uh, saw a lot of success from the television broadcast industry in the mid-1970s when a, a number of local TV stations and national TV networks used this format when its first portable model, Sony's VO3800, was released in 1974. So that model ushered in the era of electronic news gathering. And uh, from what I've read, this particular format took us all the way up into the 90s when it was replaced with more digital formats, okay? So um, Umatic was a very important part of, of television broadcasting, and a lot of times when we were watching TV as kids or, uh, you know, even you know, as adults, uh, we were watching video that was, was on this format. Now, in this case, this company here, this Phototronics, apparently uh, was a company who manufactured just short tapes to send out to... Uh, studios and stations for promotional materials. So this here is a James Dean uh, excerpt. So it has three excerpts on it from uh, James Dean movies. Uh, it's dated 9-23-1985, released by uh, Warner Brothers. 
and uh, we're actually going to look at this uh, tape here to use as our sample playback. Now the reason we're going to do that and you say well can't you play these you can't play these big tapes into a, in, in the smaller machine. You're right I can't use this big tape in my S-type machine but what I did is I took the, the, the tape out of it and I installed it in a smaller cartridge. So I took the, the tape that was in this one and put it in another cartridge because uh, this was a blank tape and put the tape in here that was in here. So we'll get to watch that in a short time here. But first off, let's open this cartridge up so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. This one's a little bit simpler on the inside than some of the other ones that I had. Uh, there's a lot of little metal, uh, I guess you'd call them guides, that's in these. And those metal guides are uh, kind of a challenge to get back in there. Just functionally, looking at the bottom here, you'll see a little round spot right there. That little round spot is for the record tab. So if you wanted to record on the tape, there had to be, and it was typically red, there had to be a red tab right there. If the red tab was removed, then the tape itself was protected against uh, being recorded over again. And there's an example of one of those tabs right there with a nice R on it. But I can take it off of that one and stick it on that one. So that makes that tape recordable, and this one not, okay? So let's go ahead and pull the cover off of this guy and let you see what's inside of here. So this one, of course, has had the tape removed, as I just described. But the tape reels themselves are actually really close together. And you'll notice this one has a hub on the top, whereas this uh, uh, supply spindle on this side uh, has the hub uh, on the bottom, or at least the, the, the flat part of it. So you can kind of see an example there, okay? So the idea was that the real estate uh, would move. So as the tape moved off of this reel, that space was minimized and then the space was increased over here on this side. So you didn't really need the two reels separated from each other. In fact, just like it is in the S-type tape. These do not overlap one another. They're sitting next to each other and they're both the same size. So that's the inside of the cartridge and there's like a, I don't know, like a slick rubber piece right here that I'm probably not supposed to be touching, but I am, uh, that the tape kind of rides on to uh, keep it in place from falling off of this hub. And um, it's got clear leaders on the front and the end, like most formats, that tell the machine when the tape is empty and uh, when it has reached the end of the side. So that's pretty cool. So again, this is the full size tape and the smaller size tape looks about the same on the inside except there are actually two separate reels, okay? So now let's get into the actual JVC player itself. And here she is, the star of today's show, the JVC CR-4900U, Professional U VCR S. Okay, so a three-quarter inch U-Matic VCR. Now again, this was used by professionals, people who worked in the uh, television industry, or maybe a school or a business may, might have used this. Uh, it's got a place for a battery right here, so you could uh, actually run this thing off of a huge battery pack. And, uh, if I can get this back on here, that is. Okay, there it goes. Uh, controls on the front are uh, eject here, which has a nice, quick spring-loading eject on it. Power button is here. Stop, audio dub, rewind, fast forward, pause, play, and record. Strangely enough, because the tape moves in the opposite direction, these controls here are reversed. So your fast forward, which is normally on the right, is on the left, and vice versa. Over here we have two stereo uh, channels, so at least two channels that could be stereo. Uh, there's an audio limiter here and two level meters for that. Your battery indicator is here and your audio monitor switch is here. So you can listen to uh, the first track or the second track or a mixture of both. There's a monitor level here for the audio output and a remote jack here in the front for a wired remote control. Now where it gets really funky is the jack panel that's on the side. Now this is one heck of a jack pack we've got going here. Let me change my camera angle so you can get a better look at it. 
A closer look at the jack panel shows you the uh, inputs and outputs for audio that that should be familiar to you if you're used to working with a, a professional sound system like in a church or a theater. Uh, you'll see that you have XLR inputs here. So for your audio one and audio two, the two channels of audio, you've got an input here for an external power supply if you're not going to use the internal battery or you need to charge the internal battery. You have some switches here to select line, high, and low for your mics and you have uh, additional switches there and a switch for line or camera. Over here we have BNC connectors for uh, video in, video out to, audio monitor is a quarter inch jack, and then continuing you have an SCN, sync in, video out one, and a time code uh, jack there. Now I'm using an adapter here so that I can convert the BNC connector to a RCA jack and that's how I'm able to connect it up to a standard television. So the other connector I'm going to use, I'll show you here in a second, it's an adapter to plug in there to get the audio. So here's the contraption I'm using to get the audio out. First I have a balanced to unbalanced uh, XLR to quarter inch jack and I'm going to plug that in right here to this uh, plug right there. And then I'm going to take a quarter inch jack to RCA connector plug it in there. I'm running out of real estate here. Then I'm going to do an RCA to RCA and I'm going to plug it into that. And then I'm going to plug my left channel of audio, the white cable, directly into that. So about 20 feet after the VCR itself, I have my audio connector connected. There's probably an easier way to do this. Probably uh, XLR to uh, RCA would be simpler, but I don't have one of those. And then uh, here's the uh, video composite connected here, and I just plug it into my little adapter there. So now I'm connected with audio and video. Isn't that special? To connect power to this guy, I'm going to plug this male plug here, which I guess is kind of like an XLR plug, but it isn't really. That goes into there on the output of this IA60 power supply. At the other end, I have this plug here, and that plugs in to the side of the VCR over there. So now I can actually power up the unit by turning that on and turning that on, and you see that I now have power. Just like the Betamax machines that you've seen on my channel, this machine also does an auto load once the cartridge is inserted. So let's go ahead and put the tape in here. Now again, this is the S-type format, so it's the only size tape that will fit in this machine. But there were larger machines back at the studio where you could take this tape out and put it in a front-loading machine and uh, do your editing from it that way. Uh, the first incarnations of the three-quarter inch Umatic uh, VCRs were like the size of your house. I mean, they were huge. Okay, maybe not quite the size of your house, but it was like the biggest VCR you've ever seen in your life. I mean, if you think the early Betamax machines were huge, the early three-quarter inch Umatic machines were even bigger. They weigh like 5,000 pounds and require a crane to move them. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the tape in and you'll hear it uh, wind into place. So it kind of sounds like a washing machine uh, kicking into gear there. Let's uh, take a look inside here and see what the, uh, the hubs are doing, the reels, when we insert the tape. So I'm going to go ahead and eject them first, and you'll see the little dance that they do there with the hubs. All right, and then let's repeat the uh, insert process. Okay, so very much like a VHS machine, when you insert a tape, it's going to wind the tape forward just enough to get it past that clear leader that we saw earlier, because there's one at the beginning and at the end of the tape. So let's take a look and see what the quality looks like. And you say, well, what is the quality? Well, the quality is like broadcast quality. So this is like DVD LaserDisc quality analog video that we're looking at here. So I would guess it has like 500 lines of resolution or more. But uh, if I'm wrong, let me know. But uh, I didn't actually see a spec out there for it. But, you know, broadcast quality is like the pinnacle of video. So let's take a look and see what that pinnacle looked like. 
So this machine, even though I only paid $15 for it, plus another $15 for this lovely power supply over here, the, uh, the unit itself has a problem with the video head. It probably needs new video heads because a lot of times these had many, many hours of recording on them and the heads would wear out. So that's the case here. So you're going to see some video smearing, what's called smearing on the video. And uh, in fact, when I try to record, I get a beeping sound as well as a little light right here that says H clog that lights up. So we're not going to be doing any, any record testing, although I have done record testing on this unit. We're just going to look at a pre-recorded tape so you can see the quality. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play there on the front. And we'll pan up here to our video screen. And it's important to have all your little switches in the right place. And it's important to have your video connector where it's supposed to be. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. All right, so we get color bars at the beginning. That was very common in broadcasting is to put color bars. So you'll see it's having a little bit of trouble tracking this tape, although because of its age, it could very well just be degraded because of uh, sitting for many, many years. So strangely, the, the first segment on here, which is a excerpt from East of Eden, starring uh, James Dean, this first segment here has quite a bit of noise and tracking issues going on with it, some strange colors. But uh, the second segment in it, on it actually looks pretty good. So let's look and see what pause looks like. So there's our pause. So you can see the smearing that's happening here, the streaking of the colors going along the side here. Of course, you can see it on his face as well. Kind of a crazy part of, uh, of this movie. So uh, let's hit fast forward. And back to play. And let's see here. So I'm going to hit stop real quick and then hit play. I'm not sure what it is with that big flash of light. The other thing that's uh, unusual about this is there's no tracking control. So it must be a, like a, you know, internal electronic process of uh, doing the tracking. But the, uh, the picture is very smooth, as you can see there. Getting a little bit of uh, zigzags there from the uh, differences in the camera and the screen. But this segment here was a little bit clearer than the first segment. I'll turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear. very steamy scene there between uh, those two actors and then we go on to some like uh, like uh, test footage uh, wardrobe test for uh, East of Eden and uh, Rebel Without a Cause so kind of a cool tape as far as what its content is kind of neat in fact it's even letterboxed just like the movie itself but you can see the streaks that are coming off the uh, the end here, and of course the the occasional uh, change there in the tracking. So I'm not entirely sure if it's tape degradation, the video head problem that it has, or a combination of the two. But uh, it's really quite pleasing the video quality is on this. And uh, like I said, I'm hoping to get a full sized professional unit to actually do some testing on hopefully one that uh, doesn't have the electric electronic problems that this particular deck has we'll take a look down at the at the the tape itself and you'll see it's moving at quite a pace there I mean it's just like chugging along this particular tape only lasts four minutes so 
give you an idea of how much tape on there versus uh, the tape speed going on there as well. All right, so I think our next step is to see what's going on inside this thing. So let's go ahead and take the lid off. So here's the lid removed, and as usual, I will kind of pan around in here and let you see what's going on on the inside. Uh, I like these hubs here that have these little buttons on the top. So these buttons kind of lock into uh, the tape itself, and they are spring-loaded as well, so that's kind of neat. And then let's go over here to the uh, the heads. So it looks like we got a, an audio head there and an audio video and a race head, I should say. And we've got some sensors here, those little black things on the end there, looking for uh, clear leader tape, probably. Uh, they may, in fact, be lights that are shining over here to this sensor right here. So let's see, is there a matching one on the other side? Uh, yeah, there's something over there as well. A lot of metal in here. I mean, do you see any plastic? Um, very little. There's a little bit of plastic right there. Uh, this is the big video head drum, the drum that's... Uh, having all the issues at this point. So we'll see, uh, there's a, a head right there. And you say, oh my gosh, Brad, did you clean the heads? Yes, I did, I cleaned the heads, scrubbed them with uh, toothpaste and, uh, you know, spit to, to clean them up there, did a spit shine on them. Actually, no, I used alcohol, but uh, I think these heads are just so worn out that, because uh, you can see that little black segment there right next to the head itself which is uh, microscopic. But uh, let's pan over the top of this thing. You can see all the little connectors there. In fact, that's where the video signal comes off the head, right there into that gray wire. And let's pan around over on this side as well. Got some, uh, some circuitry there. Another board back here behind it. Going along here. See that board with those yellow capacitors there on the left side. Big old springs going across there. And of course the, the carriage right there is where your tape goes in. So uh, let's do that next. Let's go ahead and throw a tape in and watch it load. Prepare for the loop of your life. Tape loop that is. So just like we've seen in the Betamax machines, we got little uh, a little choo-choo train of loading mechanism that goes around in a circle there pulling the tape around the video head and through all the other uh, heads there. Let's hit the eject and see what that looks like. And here's something a little different than we normally do. Let's take a look at it from the aspect of the the back end of the tape. Notice there's a little uh, little thing that goes into the tape right there to release this cover, this dust cover on the front. So, uh, and there's the tape, just a little loop of it sticking out there. And let's push the tape down and watch what it does. If we can. There we go. There's a whole lot of clicking going on there, isn't there? Let's try that eject again. That was kind of cool. Alright, let's look at it from up above a little bit. Here's an angle from the actual video head itself, or at least right next to it.
Here's a shot of the video head as it comes uh, back to its stopping position, still position. And let's take a look at some of the functions here. So first of all, fast forward, which actually looks like rewind. And you'll notice the tape is coming off the hub on this side, the left side, but it's also picking up on the take up side on the same side, on the left. Unlike VHS or beta, where it's on both, you know, opposite. So on this side, it would be on over here and over there, it'd be over there. But hey, let's be different with Umatic. Let's just be different. Let's go ahead and hit stop and rewind. And let's watch for that clear leader tape to come through, which will signal the machine to come to a halt. Here it comes. Ready? Get ready for it. It's about to happen. Yeah, it looks like it stopped it uh, clear before it uh, comes out of the uh, cassette and goes into the tape path, because I don't see it at all there. And to conclude this video, I was going to show you some of these tapes that I purchased in a lot off of eBay and I got all of these tapes for $15 and unfortunately two of the tapes had mold or some kind of white stuff on the actual tape itself so I went ahead and stripped those out stripped the tape out of those and pitched it and hopefully I'll find some some tape to replace it and uh, and rehouse in the cartridge but uh, apparently there's a several companies who created these segments for promotional use uh, Phototronics in Burbank California uh, a company called Advanced Digital Services Incorporated, and they're in North Hollywood, California. And then uh, there's another company here called AME. Or, yeah, I guess I said that right. And also in Burbank. And then uh, we got Vidtronics back here. And we've got Phototronics back here once again. So as far as the segments goes, uh, this first one here is a Warner Brothers The Amazing Panda Adventure electronic press kit and trailer from uh, 1995. So look at there, this, this tape format was still being used in 1995. We got this one here. This is a movie trailer for the movie Be Dazzled and uh, it's from the year 2000. Oh my gosh, even in 2000 we were still using this stuff. All right, so uh, Be Dazzled trailer, 2 minutes and 30 seconds stereo. That'll be a fun one to watch once I get a machine that I can fit these in. Uh, this one says the Manchurian Candidate clip reel. Meeting on a train, Raymond's mother, details, blah, blah, blah. Uh, United Artists publicity from 420 of 88. That's uh, the year I graduated high school, actually. Four, well, I, I didn't graduate in... May, but uh, or April, yeah, but uh, anyway, that takes me back. Okay, and then uh, here's one of the, the, the tapes that was damaged, uh, this Lone Ranger tape with uh, clips from Rescue and Silver Bullet. Uh, this one was dated 1981, and this was the James Dean one that we saw portions of that I took the tape out of, and uh, so it's from Warner Brothers from 1985, as we already saw. So that pretty well concludes this video for today of the U-Matic format, another format for you to go out there and find and collect. Uh, if you do see one of the professional machines out there and find a good price on it, look at the shipping charges because I've seen some of the bigger decks ship for over $100 because they are huge and heavy. So... Um, Keep an eye on that, something to watch out for. But again, thank you for watching this video today. Please subscribe, share this with a friend, hit that like button, and leave a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the DataBits channel.